Statistics show black people are more likely to be arrested than white people in the U.S. Colorado is no different. We know it isn't right, but it gets complicated when you start to ask why it happens and how to change it. Ryan Hare talked to Coloradans who live this reality every day. People whose lives have been shaped by their interactions with police. Then Ryan had a conversation with police. First impressions can have an impact that last a lifetime. I'm coming down the steps and about four police officers drew their firearms on me. Justin Cooper remembers his first encounter with police well. I lived in uh, the front uh, side of the north of, Mont of Montbello. And was pulled over. Wasn't given a reason why I was pulled over. Rashad Thomas does too, a reminder of why their paths have been complicated. And I remember shaking, literally shaking. Pulled out of the car while it's snowing, 20 below. And my mother hears it. And she comes out of the apartment screaming, like, you know, uh, that's my son, that's my son. And we're in shorts because we still had our basketball gear on. Left to sit on the curb for more than an hour in freezing cold temperatures. Never given a ticket, never arrested, ultimately told, you guys can go. And it was a case of mistaken identity. They were looking for someone, but their initial uh, approach to me was to draw their firearms. I was seven years old when that occurred. Those dramatic first interactions with police would be the beginning of many for these two in Montbello. They feel black neighborhoods in Denver have always been saturated with police. Rashad was arrested several times in his early years and says charges were always dropped, but the repercussions lasted. It's for me to be tagged, you know, like you, you catch an animal and you, you tag them, you know, so that way now we have record of who you are and what you do and, and where you go. And what it created was a record of arrest. And so Justin has similar stories motivating him to work on reforming the system. He's now deputy director with the Colorado Criminal Justice Reform Coalition. You know, the data shows that there's some form of aspect of implicit bias occurring as it refers as it relates to policing, especially in communities of color, specifically of African Americans. And this isn't just a Denver issue. The Colorado Division of Criminal Justice has been keeping data on race and arrests since 2015. Most recent data shows African Americans are disproportionately arrested in Colorado. They make up one of every 25 Coloradans, but one in eight of the arrests in the state. That means they're twice as likely to be arrested than a Hispanic Coloradan and about three and a half times more likely to be arrested than a white person. I think the first thing that I would say is that uh, disparity does not necessarily equal bias. Uh, uh, it certainly uh, is a conversation starter. It, it certainly would suggest that we need to dig into our numbers and really kind of get an understanding of why there is such disparity. Denver Police Division Chief Ron Thomas explains he doesn't feel it's as simple as police targeting black people. To him, it's a much more intricate social issue. Well, I do think that there is a correlation between poor neighborhoods and prison. I do think that there's a correlation between low economic conditions, uh, low educational opportunities, and uh, crime in prison. And so that's one of the reasons why we have endeavored to really address uh, the social correlates in neighborhoods so that we can, again, you know, build neighborhoods up rather than tear them down. But that's not to say he doesn't think the department needs to evolve. A summer of nationwide unrest made that clear. Many minority communities are not happy with the way they're being policed. On one occasion, I was stopped twice by the same officer for a light out on my license plate on my same block. At the heart of the argument for men like Rashad and Justin is a feeling they're being profiled. What really pushed me to go come into this work of reform, having those personal experiences of being slammed on police cars, you know, um, arrested without being Mirandized. I think there's an implicit bias throughout society. I think that people come with implicit bias, and certainly people coming to the Denver Police Department uh, have their own implicit biases. Chief Thomas says implicit bias training is an important part of training, but he says the department is committed to a bigger self-reflection that started long before this summer. Three years ago, Thomas became part of a task force committed to collecting data on who they stop and why, including age, gender, race, and ultimately how the interaction ended. It's data currently being compiled by the Center for Policing Equity, and when returned, Thomas hopes the department can act, take action. He hopes will bring the community and officers together for an uncomfortable conversation. I think they take this job for one reason, and that's to help people, uh, and I think that that's their intent. The divide, I think, uh, starts when um, 
when we don't necessarily listen to our community in terms of what it is that the community wants to see, you know, how do they want to be policed. I am not a proponent of defunding police. I do think that downsizing and reconfiguring how resources are allocating and policing is important. Rashad and Justin encountered but recovered from the worst of what they feel is an over-policed community, overcame having to answer, have you ever been arrested? on applications. There are barriers to getting jobs, there are barriers to getting housing, there are barriers to getting um, post-secondary education. And I think that that factor also plays into when they're over-policing, there's subsequent consequences. Those collateral consequences matter in people's lives. If history tells us anything, solutions to these problems will not come easy. It's the same old song. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's talk a good game, but you know, ultimately you have to show me. Um, you have to show the community and the people that's in the community what changes are being made. But Rashad and Justin hope that after centuries of history repeating itself, that this current racial reckoning leads to lasting change. You have to have some type of hope, but being a black American, it's hard to have hope. In Denver, Ryan Herrer, 9 News.